All right, so this is a, a example problem. I call it a case study that goes with lecture 16. This is on how to solve engineering problems, how to solve algebraic problems, either linear or nonlinear algebraic problems. And this is really was originally developed as an in-class activity um, for lecture 16. And so I'm going to um, walk us through it a little bit, but I'm going to pause. Um, and I want you to use this as an activity and an opportunity to practice um, before I tell you the answer. So you cannot do that, of course. You can just watch the video and get whatever you get out of it, all right? But, I, but I'd really recommend that what you do is, um, is go through this case study here with me um, and, then, uh, and then pause when I ask you to pause and work it out on your own. I think you'll get a lot more out of it when we do that, okay? So um, the first thing I'm going to do here um, uh, is... Let's just look at, so this is on the, on the website, but we can just, uh, on my course website, we can look at this real quick. There's a problem statement um, associated with this case study on the next page. Okay, I'll put a link to this in the video. Um, if you're not in the class, but if you're in the class, this is just on the course website, all right? This is a single page from a book um, by my old uh, PhD advisor, Kevin Dorfman, um, in a book he and, and uh, Padromos Dautidis wrote on numerical methods. And they have this nice little problem, okay? So read through that. I like it because it's not traditional chemical engineering, and so I think it sort of challenges you to think about um, some different of intuition and other things that sort of test us in these kinds of engineering problems that we're, that we're trying to do in class here, okay? Um, so what I want you to do is pause the video first and go read through that problem statement, okay? So go ahead and do that now. Okay, so hopefully you've read through, through the problem statement. Um, so now the, the thing that I'm going to ask you to do for this case study is to do what it says here in number two, which is find the extension. Okay, and if I'm not mistaken, the extension is x over l. If we come down here and look at um, what they call the extension, okay, extension x over l, all right, find the extension um, of a lambda DNA molecule, so of lambda DNA, uh, subjected to a force of 30 piconewtons. Okay, so that's the goal of this is to find that extension of lambda DNA. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is sit down. Part A is I want you to do what I said was this tip one, which was identify the problem. All right, so I want you to identify the problem, so pause the video. Um, sit down and figure out and identify the problem and what method you're going to use. Okay, so so um, hopefully you've done that. So let's look at the problem here. Let's write down the main equation that we have. All right. So they said that for DNA, there's this model called a worm-like chain model, and the curve that describes the relationship between force and extension is given as follows: FB over KBT, one half. 1 minus x over l to the minus 2 minus 1 half 2x over l. Okay, so the first thing was to recognize that this is actually the equation, right? So over here you read uh, that there are a bunch of different equations. There's a Hookean model, all right? Um, and then they say, let's focus on DNA, okay, down here. And DNA has this certain relationship. And this is the model for DNA. Okay, so you had to read carefully enough to get that, right? Then the second thing you have to do is figure out, is this a linear system or a nonlinear system, all right? And now the big take, the big key here should be that there's a minus two here. So it's gonna be a nonlinear system, right? Um, it's gonna be a nonlinear equation. And so we're gonna have to somehow solve for X, okay? Which is in this, you know, uh, a nonlinear equation, all right? Um, now what we want to do is, given that we know it's nonlinear, we need to have a method uh, for solving this. So um, we're going to pick Python as our method, uh, or as our numerical tool, and our method there, um, say we're going to use um, the root function in scipy.optimize, right? So that's part A. Okay, so now let's look back up here, and let's look at part B. So part B is now on our piece of paper here. Convert this equation into standard mathematical form, ax equals b, or f of x equals 0. So go ahead and, and pause the video and do that. All right, so um, convert it to standard form. How do we do this? All right, so now we know we had a nonlinear equation. 
So that means we're going to try and convert to f of x equals 0. Okay, so let's think about that. There's our, there's our equation right there. So what do we have to do to get that to be f of x equals 0? Well, we really have to do two things, right? We need to identify our knowns and unknowns. So what are our knowns in this problem? Okay, we know f, that's 30 piconewtons. We know b, that's what's called the Kuhn length. If you look in here in this problem, it says the Kuhn length here is 100 nanometers. Okay, um, some students often uh, get hung up on this. They say, I don't know this uh, KBT, okay? Um, and this is maybe where, maybe this is a little tricky, okay? Um, but KB, you should know, that's Boltzmann's constant. That's sometimes tricky for people. So that's Boltzmann. Okay, and this one is maybe the hardest. Um, temperature, I don't think um, uh, this example problem gives you temperature, but DNA is at, is at body temperature, okay, or at room temperature. It's not going to be at, uh, you know, this is it's not going to be at some crazy temperature. So people who think about this, um, really, they mean room temperature here, which might be 298K. So we'll just assume 298K for a moment, all right? Um, so maybe that was the hard part. Maybe you um, got messed up on that. That's why maybe it's not a homework problem. Um, just a little case study to think about. Um, what are our unknowns? Okay, we don't know the extension X. Um, oh, we also know L, all right? So um, I said up here, I think I said that the extension is X over L. Um, I, I was reading a little more carefully, um, and uh, Kevin calls this X, whereas L is just the total, uh, the total length, all right, uh, of the molecule. All right, so we should know all those things. So our unknowns now, um, we can, you know, make this into a vector, but this is actually just a single equation, a single unknown, and it's already written as X. So that makes our life a little easier. So we'll just rearrange. So we'll just write um, FB over KBT minus 1 half 1 minus X over L to the minus 2. And then this one comes over here, becomes a plus 1 half minus 2X over L equal to 0. All right. So now that's in standard form, right? That's some function of X equals 0, where our X is our extension. Uh, extension. Okay, now let's go on to part three. So part three says convert the problem to consistent units. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and, and do that right now. All right, so hopefully you've converted this to consistent units. Let's see how it's done. All right, we have two things that we care about unit wise. We've got this guy L. So L is 16.8 microns. Okay, let's put that in our uh, uh, in meters, so we have 16.8, um, you know, microns, and we can we can say there's 10 to the minus six meters per micron. Uh, so that should give us 1.68 times 10 to the minus fifth meters. Okay. The other quantity we have is this guy here, um, force times the Kuhn length divided by uh, thermal energy. So the force is, uh, I think it was 30 piconewtons. Um, Kuhn length was, um, what, 100 nanometers. Um, KB is, what, 1.3806 uh, times 10 to the minus 23, um, what is that, joules per Kelvin. And then temperature is 298 Kelvin. All right. So... Um, you know, how do we go ahead and calculate those units? Let's just do a little bit of rearranging. So I have 30, a oh, piconewton is times 10 to the minus 12 newtons, which should be kilograms, meters uh, per second squared. And then I have 100 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And then I have 1.3806 times 10 to the negative 23 uh, joule is a newton meter per Kelvin, so I'm just going to cancel the newtons right there, right, and the meters right there, boom, and then I have 298 Kelvin, and the Kelvin cancels right there. So um, this is unitless. That makes sense, because if we look back at our equation up here, x has units of length, l has units of length, so that's unitless, so our whole equation has to be unitless, so that makes our life a little easier, and I'm going to spare us the time to calculate this, because I already calculated this number out on my notes, and it should be 729.5 with no units. 
Okay, so we've converted our problem to uh, good units. Okay, so now we have step D, which is determine a smart guess. Okay, so I want you to pause the video and I want you to think about what would a smart guess be? Okay, there's a couple different ways to go about thinking about a good guess here, All right? So the first one is um, I could take um, X divided by L, right? And I know that has to be between uh, one and zero, right? And L I said was on the order of, I just wrote it up here, uh, one times 10 to the minus fifth meters, right? So is that 1.68 times 10 to the minus fifth meters? Okay, so that means I know X. Suppose X was about 0.5 L. That would be halfway, okay? That one would be, you know, that would be about um, eight times 10 to the minus six meters. That might be a pretty good guess, okay? If I think if it stretched more than halfway, I could go up as high as L, all right? And I could go down, you know, lower, okay? But a good guess might, so maybe I'm gonna round that number because who cares if that's exactly on, and I'm gonna call it just one times 10 to the minus uh, five meters. I'm gonna round that up to the next 10, all right? So that's gonna be my guess, right? So the last thing we have left to do then, we've got all this stuff in, now we need to solve the problem, all right? So let's work our way um, through solving this problem. Uh, in Python. Let's go ahead and do it. Go ahead. So we're going to, um, we need to define our function, right? We need to define f of x equals zero. And we said that it was going to be, um, let's look up here. We said it was going to be fb minus this stuff. So I'm going to pull this down on the next screen for a moment and just look at it for a second so I can type that in. Oh, I'm going to need to move that over. So I'm going to have FB over KBT. Well, I calculated what that was. That was 729.5. So maybe I'll even want to make that a variable so I can remember where it came from. I'll make that 729.5. So that's just my little way of having FB divided by KBT. All right, so I can remember where that came from. Minus, and then let's look at this equation here. I had... 1 half multiplied by 1 minus x divided by L plus 1 half minus 2 times x divided by L. All right, and I'm going to make that return. And I need to define L up here as well. So L is going to be another constant. L I said was 1.68 times 10 to the negative fifth meters. And I like to put a comment there to make sure I have meters. All right. So the other thing I'm going to need while I have this guy out is my guess. So let me put x guess. And I'm going to say, if I remember right, we just said that it's about 1 times 10 to the negative fifth meters. Okay. I think we can get rid of that guy now. And here we go. Okay. So now how do we solve a nonlinear equation like this, right? So uh, the first thing we do is we need to import numpy and we need to import um, scipy.optimize. And I like to do it as opt. Um, I don't think that's standard for anybody, but I like to do that, All right? And so then what we do is we're gonna call opt.root um, and it gives us this nice little thing here, so we can see we're going to put in the function, comma, all right, and then we're going to put in the guess, x guess, and we're going to say x solution down here is equal to opt.root uh, f guess, okay? And then I'm going to run it, probably going to give me some error. Oh, it didn't even give me an error, x solution. Oh, and I remember, okay, when you do opt.root, it gives you out this whole solution vector, all right? It tells you, oh, I've converged. So usually what you want, okay, is dot x. You don't want, uh, uh, you know, the, all this other stuff. So it's a dictionary, so you give it dot x and it runs, okay? And now if I look x solution, right, it's giving me this array, okay? So it gave me an answer, 
Um, it's bigger than the answer I expected to get, so I'm going to check it. So let me call f of x solution, and let me just check my solution. So this should be my residual, right? So I'm going to print this out. Residual. Oh, forgot a piece there. Let me run that guy. That gives me a residual of zero. Tells me it's good. Okay, I'm going to do one more check, just because I feel nervous uh, about... Um, having the right answer. I'm going to put a little plotting tool in, in here. So import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. I'm going to add a little plot, a little figure. So let me add plot.figure and let me make that kind of a big one so we can see it. 12 by, 12 by 8. And I'm going to give it a uh, font size of 16 okay and I need to have something to plot so let, let me make an x to plot of numpy.lin space from 0 to L right um, that should be pretty good and then I can have uh, an F plot which should be you know this FB over KBT that should be my F of X Plot. I should be able to plot those two next to each other. So I have x plt and f plt, and I'll make that maybe a black line, okay? And I'll do plot.show. And let's run that and see what happens, okay? Well, that looks funky. I expected to see a different curve that comes over here and falls off. Something is going on here that is just different than I'm expecting. So now I'm going to check my solution. All right, so sorry for the for the little mistake. So I sit in here staring at it, and now I'm thinking, aha, I know I did something wrong. I forgot to put this to the minus 2. Okay, so let me run that again. Okay, now I see this nice uh, uh, curve that I was expecting to see. Um, and, okay, so lo and behold, um, this is now giving me an issue. So now this says divide by zero and count it in this power. Okay, so the problem to divide by zero here is that I'm now going from zero to L, right? And if I get one in the denominator, so I don't want to go all the way quite to L, let me go to like 0 0.999 times L. Let me see if that solves that problem. Okay, um, now I get this big spike. Maybe I'm even too close to L there. It's getting way far down. Um, even more I don't need to even go that high okay so there now I'm doing pretty good maybe even 0.98 L okay there we go now we can see where I'm crossing zero so now that I can see where I'm crossing zero let me do plt dot plot and let me put on my x solution and f of x solution and let me give it a blue circle and see what that looks like Okay, so previously I had my guess as times 10 to the minus fifth here. When I run this guy, okay, and I plot my solution down here, I get something crazy out here. So clearly my solution isn't working. Something went wrong. So now what I'm thinking is that my residual here is bugging out, okay, because I've made a funky guess and I'm not getting close to the answer and it's something's going wrong here. And if you think about it, what's going on is that this thing goes down and down and down. Um, and, you know, perhaps um, it's just wildly inappropriate, right? The answer that it was giving, um, if we look at our solution, if we run this again. Um, oh, it's not printing out the solution. Let's print out the solution real quick. Okay, if we print out the solution... Um, oh, this always bugs me. Let's pull zero there. Okay. Um, that is 0 0.006 meters. That is bigger than L, right? L is, you know, if I print out X solution divided by L, that's 364. So that says I've gone to 364 times the extension. That can't be a right answer. Okay. So we, now we need to go back and see what went wrong. All right. And it turns out here, this is just fine, but let's check our guess. Maybe our guess wasn't the right answer. That's often the place to look in these kind of solutions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot down here 
um, uh, instead of the solution, I'm going to plot my guess. Okay, and now when I plot my guess, notice that I've rescaled my x-axis so that it's x over l. Okay, and when I plot my guess, um, uh, now you can see that if I guess uh, 10 to the minus 5, I'm guessing here. That must not be coming to the solution. Let me maybe put down my solution here again so we can see. So solution x solution. And I'm going to make this a red square. Okay, and but I'm going to put my x-axis from 0 to 1 so it doesn't go crazy. Okay? Uh, but x, oh, it's x ln. Excuse me. Okay, so now I can't see it. It's way off out there. All right, so I don't have the answer yet. So let me change my guess. Instead of making it 10 to the minus 5, let me make it some fraction of L. Let me make it 0.8L. Okay, 0.8L puts it there. Still not getting the right answer, right? My X solution over L is, you know, 1.02. So somewhere off of here where I can't see it. Maybe if I put, um, nah, still not going to see it, right? So it's getting really stiff there. So let me try 0.9L as a guess, okay? Closer, but still 1.02 on my solution. Let me try a guess of 0.95L. And now, okay, 95, now this looks like it's doing better. It's found an answer that's pretty close, okay? That's, that's reasonable, 0.97 of L, and it's 7.8, that residual small. I can even make another guess. Let me guess 0.97, okay? And that didn't change very much from the previous answer. The previous answer was 973. This one's also 973. And now I'm feeling pretty good like I've actually converged to the right answer. Now this looks a little funky here. It looks like I'm missing the edge, but I think there's a plotting error. So I can come up here to this lint space and I can add some more points. Let me add, make up 201 points that I'm plotting along that edge. Now you can see it goes right through the curve. Okay, so I had to make a better guess. That was why I wasn't converging. Okay, all right. So hopefully this has been helpful. You can see that even for me, it takes a few minutes when I try and solve a nonlinear equation. It's not something I just plug in. I have to kind of mess around with it. And getting a good guess can be hard. And you can see how some of these things of using some physical intuition come into play when making a good guess. All right, so that's all I have for you. Hope you have a great one.